Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles. Welcome to the final game of this best of three. Game three of three. Game one, we saw some awesome mech action, some relentless blue flame Hellion harassment, and unfortunately we saw the Zerg player go down. Game two though, he was back and fighting, he went for some super mutilist aggression and was able to level up the series, so what will happen in game 3 we can only wait and see, but let me introduce these two. In the lower left position, the blue Zerg, we do have Demaga. His opponent in the top right, the red Terran, winner of game 1, loser of game 2, it is happy. Who probably isn't too happy right now, after losing out to those muters in what was a bit of a base race situation. And then seeing Broodlords, which is the moment where you're just like, no, the Broodlords, why? Anything but Broodlords I can deal with. But those, nope, just not going to work. So, game three, Cloud Kingdom. Getting back on track there. What can we expect from these two players? Well, I'm going to go on a limb. 15 hatch. 16 pull from Demaga out of happy. Just gonna say it's probably gonna be a one rack command center because it is a very common build. It's the meta game. Neither one has really varied out of that build in terms of the early game. What you can see is just some variation in gas timing from Demaga. Will he get one early and get that quick zergling speed as we saw in game two? Will he instead wait until he gabs all four gas at once on two bases? Who knows? Time will be the revealer though. Meanwhile for Happy, he's done some very build as, as well. Went for a very greedy third command center that arguably didn't pay off for him in game two, but did manage to get a quick tank out with siege mode to be in a defensive position. And that would suit this map as well, just because you could stick tanks up here, which gives you very good coverage and it's very difficult to take it out should you try and go in for a push. But for the moment, Demago getting up his hatchery, getting up his gas as well, and the spawning volume is actually gas before pull. So this means a very, very fast zergling speed. It also means that potentially if he keeps the drones in gas, he can go for some quick roaches as well in order to fend off Hellions. So we'll wait to see what he chooses to do. Happy about to start up his command center though, so it's looking A-OK. -okay. And what this generally just means is that actually... These two aren't going to be going at each other for the near future. The single SCV scouting very effectively yet again, and this is something we saw in game two, is that Happy kept coming back in with this SCV and did actually scout that the drones were pulled out, then put back in and the road to was started, which really threw Demaga off his play early game, because that seemed to be his plan was to get that sneaky road to own, and that's likely why we're not seeing this SCV get pulled out quite yet. We've got, obviously, the Zerglings in production, See that speed is now started, just keeping an eye out whether or not drones are put back into that gas in case he has to be wary of any roaches. Now, in terms of going into the later game, which we have seen in every game so far this series, that really Demaga will be aiming for Broodlord Infester most likely. Having said that though, he has seemed to be favouring a nice roach play, especially heavy upgrades with roach ling, ling bling, maybe even muters as well, we'll wait to see, but for the moment, the factory for Happy, the reactor for Happy, because he hasn't seen the early roach warren, he knows that actually hellions are still a viable thing to do. If you see early roaches, then it's a bit pointless going hellions to be honest, because it's not going to be able to achieve very much. In terms of what else, bunker at the front just to make sure you're safe from any poking or prodding from a small number of zerglings. Of course a large number of zerglings and especially speedlings can just stream straight past that but generally speaking you're not going to be worrying about that unless of course the zerg player was going to go for some kind of massive all in or while you're getting drones you just can't afford it but Demaga is now going for 18 speedlings. That is a big commitment of really Really big commitment. If we look at his vision, he sees that there's no wall off. He sees a potential opportunity to try and push through. The Hellions are trying to come out. We do have the tech lab and the second factory started. So it's going to be mech for Happy, meaning he's going to be very vulnerable to this. The Speedlings also taking the long route round just in case this watchtower was being held. That means this will catch Happy completely off guard. He is going to have to sacrifice this natural. There's no wall off to the main either. So this is going to cause a major problem. In come the Zerglings. They get a complete surround on the bunker. There's no way that they're going to be able to come in to save that. No repair will be able to go off. The Hellions 
are on the field. Blue Flame is getting resurged yet again, but of course the Speedlings just streaming up. Good control though out of Happy at the moment, and he is able to deal with an awful lot of those Zerglings. Of course, they're trying to get in range of those Hellions. The big question though, was it worth it? Only three workers killed, an awful lot of speedlings lost, more resources lost, but will that supply depot go down? Yes, it does burn sound before a repair can go off. Supply blocking happy, but of course we see the roaches out now. This is up to Demarga to defend, he's getting the double evolution chamber, gonna go for the double queen wall off. His third hatchery is nearly complete, no sign of a roach war and just the second gas coming up. So all in all, I would say that push wasn't terrible for Demaga, but I would say it does still favour Happy slightly due to picking off all those feedlings without taking much work damage. And now Happy even getting those Hellions into the natural. Unfortunately, the Spine Caller does finish up just in time, but more Zerglings are getting barbecued. That means the Hellions have been successful. Lost tab is the important thing to look at, and actually, Happy has lost more now after losing that Supply Depot. And I think that's the Supply Depot that levelled things out and made that an a good trade for Demaga, thinking about it a bit more seriously, but this is the important thing. If we look at the vision, Happy doesn't know that the third base is down, and therefore is unlikely to go and push into it quite yet. One of these Hellions should probably go and check it, but Demaga, he's getting up his Bailing Nest, he's getting up a Spire as well, very early, so Ling Bling Muta, going back to Yeldon styles against Terran. The Hellions do now know that this third is up, Blue Flame is finished, the Lava could also get taken out, that's always a good thing to take out as well, because if you do pick up those Lava, it's always going to be a hit, a hit to the Zerg's production, and as such, it is good news. The Spire, well, yet again, this could catch Happy off guard, because as we can see for the time being, he doesn't have any missile charges down, he is getting up the, the engineering bay, he's got the command center on its way, but importantly, he has zero Marines, let me reiterate that, none. There is literally nothing Happy has at the time being that can shoot up. So unless he blindly builds some missile turrets, Mutalisks are going to be near unstoppable for him. But there we go, the missile turrets are coming down. He's, he's blindly going for those, and I think that's actually a very good decision considering the build he's going for, because if you aren't getting Marines, you would just get an insta win if you were Muta against this. There's, you couldn't stop it, you couldn't actually build the missile turrets quicker than the Mutalisk will kill them. These Lava getting taken out yet again, and it might not seem like a big deal, but losing those Lava is really quite substantial in terms of the production for Demaga. The Mutas are on their way out, the Hellion count getting really quite high though. The Banelings are the threat, so needs to kite those back, needs to make sure he does not get surrounded by those Zerglings, but there they are, they are taken down. The single Queen, unfortunately, will fall as well, but the Spine Caller does manage to burrow, one Hellion will fall there, we've got the third Evolution Chamber coming down in order to complete the wall off, the Hellion's chipping away at that though, and the Queen is also chipping away at the Hellions themselves, so this is something that you are going to be a little bit concerned about, but now the Mutants are out, you should be fine. We may see potentially some more Missile Tides come down, but to be honest, with the Thors coming out, and I didn't actually see that Thor on the field, now that Thor's on the field, there's no need for that, but all in all, I would say Happy is going to be pretty comfortable with that push. Even though he hasn't killed many workers, he killed a lot of lava. And as such, Demago has lost a lot more than he has. In terms of the worker count as well, 47 to 60. Not as far ahead as Demago would like, especially with this third orbital command down. The Mutalisks just chilling at the watchtower there, waiting to see what could be coming in. Only six on the field. Demago getting up his Roach Warren, getting up a Spine Crawler. It's sensible to get that Roach Warren when you know your opponent has committed to so many Blue Flame Hellions because you need a way to deal with them effectively. Especially if, as in Game 1, we see Happy go for that Pokey Proddy strategy with those Hellions into the third base. So all in all, these two are playing very smart. They are trying to outwit each other as best they can. The Thor's getting a couple of volleys off onto the Muters. Don't manage to kill any, but some good damage done nonetheless. And that revealing the Thor means that Demaga is going to have to be very careful with these Muters. And most likely won't commit to any more. This is something I love. The Demaga is going for this hidden base in the bottom right. It just means that he is unable, or rather it means that Happy is unlikely to go and scout it out unless he goes down to check there. The Mutas are going to try and knock out some of these Hellions. They're desperately trying to get away and will manage to do so for the time being. More missile turrets, more Thors, more... not more tanks, just a very Thor-heavy style, which can be responded to by Demaga. 
through getting a lot of roaches. He's getting up the 2-2 missile attack armor. He's really going to have a good composition to deal with these Thors and Hellions. The fifth phase, which seems like a fourth to Happy, is going to be able to get down. Obviously the Thors are trying to come across, but it doesn't matter too much because Tamarka is getting out such a sizable chunk of roaches. May have to cancel this base just due to how long it'll take to get out, but he can afford to do that due to this hidden base in the bottom right position. Now we see the Thors coming in. This will definitely be a cancel now. There we go. Nothing Tamarka can do about that. Loses the drone as well, unfortunately. But in come the Hellions to the third base, and a lot of drones could potentially die here. Luckily for Tamarka, the Zerglings do come in at just the right time and will clean out the Hellions, but a lot of Zerglings go down as well there. In terms of resources lost, Tamarka losing over a thousand more resources than the Terran in this game, which is something that you don't really want to be happening. Up here, the Mutants are trying to poke and prop, pick off an SCV or two, preventing, well, not preventing, but delaying those two command centers being constructed. But the Thors and Tank are now besieging into the third base. Drop Tech is going to be utilized, though. We do have Roach Drops on their way in, going to come straight on top of the Tank. And these Thors are going to be going down, and this are going to fall very quickly now. The Tank is dead, the Thors are dying, and that is cleaned up very nicely but the important thing is this little bit of creep here without a hatchery on top of it is a big big problem for Demaga. he's down to three bases yet again compared to the three bases of his opponent and his opponent even about to get up his fourth and fifth command center so what Demaga has to do is some serious damage some roaches completing the wall off there preventing these hellions coming through will they be able to snipe off the last one or will it get away it's going to be able to get away for the time being the rest of these overlords just waiting patiently. The tank count for Happy though, incredibly low. Only three tanks on the field, and I can see two, there's the third one. So three tanks sitting there, no siege up though. Can Happy see this? No, he can only see the one overlord, so I don't think he is even aware that this drop could be coming in quite yet, but now it is gonna be going. Happy pulling back as best as he can. What is this drop going to be able to do? Is he going to go straight for the main? Is he going to go for the third? A little bit of indecisiveness out of Demaga there. Can he decide which is he going to go for? He needs to be careful of the Thors. The Roach is still pushing in, just threatening that if you move your mech army over here, I'm going to drop Roaches on your head. Some Vikings coming in, though. That means these Overlords will have to drop down those Roaches fairly quickly or risk losing them. Two get out, one gets taken out by those Vikings, though. The drop going into the main base now. This means that suddenly Happy is having to defend at both the main and third. This third mineral line has been ransacked for the time being. The tanks sieged up on the low ground, but are not able to defend this mineral line in the main. And as such, these Roaches just really committing in a long way forward. The tanks trying to come up, trying to engage as best they can. But with the 2-2 upgrades against the 1-1, these roaches are going to engage against Thor as well, but will not engage against even one tank that effectively. That is always a concern. The fourth base is taking damage. We do still have these roaches sitting, wandering around in the main. They're trying to pull back. They're picking off the production. They've taken out the double armory. And now a burrow. That is frustrating. A scan will alleviate the frustration though for Happy and now this means that the push in the main should get cleaned up but round two is already gearing its way forward. We've got Tunnel and Claws and I love the way Demaga is really utilizing Burrow Roaches in this series. He's used them in game one and now again in game three and I think it's a strategy that is often not employed enough. In terms of these mules, obviously kicking, getting to kill this many mules for nothing is obviously going to be fantastic for any Zerg player in any situation. Of course, looking at the work account, 61 to 46. Some Roaches pushing blindly into a lot of tanks. Will they be able to get a Thor? Not quite, a Burrow goes down, trying to heal up. Tunneling Claws is not yet finished. There is no energy for a scan yet, but once this Orbital Command lands, it won't take too long at all. Of course, Tunneling Claws does need to finish up fairly soon, and when it does finish up, they can start shuffling their way out trying to get into a bit more of a defensive position. The Vikings are looking around. We do still have this hidden base at the bottom right, which is really being helpful for Demaga at the moment. It's keeping him in this game after losing his third. But to be honest, I would still say that Happy is having the problems because he is behind in terms of supply. We've even got some Hydras on their way out now, which is not so common. This top base does get taken off, or rather it's not complete building, to buy those Vikings. The Roaches come back to try and defend it. Tunneling Claws is now finished, and... I don't know if Happy's forgotten about these roaches, but half going towards the natural, half going towards the third, yet 
more SCVs are going to get taken down here. This is going to pull back Happy's army. He's going to straight into it. Now, where's he going to go for? Is it going to be the main? Is it going to be the natural? The main seems to be the choice for most of these. They're just going to go in. They're going to try and pick off any workers they can. This is pushing Happy to the max in terms of multitasking. Trying to defend everywhere at once. Losing workers everywhere at once. Demaga has killed. 38, probably going to be over 40 before this is cleaned up workers this game, and is now sitting comfortably at 63 to 40. The Roaches yet again backing out Demarga's bottom right expansion has been spotted though. That is unfortunate for him, but he does have his third back up and running. Needs to start thinking about taking this base, I think, fairly soon. Hellion's trying to come in. The Hydra's now revealed. What is Demarga's long-term plan? Well, it looks for the moment to just be denying expansions and keeping the work account low, preventing Happy from being able to achieve that large late-game army that you inevitably want when going mech. And Demarg is doing a good job of what he wants to be doing for the time being. 63 to 41 still. That's a good, solid lead in terms of the workers, even with the mules. And as such, with this main base nearly mined out, and with the natural nearly mined out, Happy is running into some problems. He's got to secure a third, a fourth base shortly. He's got to also try and take out this base for Demarga, but leaving a couple of roaches here is the smart play. It just means that actually those drones are a lot safer from Hellion run buys and should keep Demarga ahead for the time being. Upgrades are still 2-2 v 1-1, so that's a solid advantage for Demarga, but the tank count really getting a lot higher, and that's the concern, because as these tanks start spreading out, getting a good siege up, the roaches alone will struggle, because that's when the roaches do start getting picked out very easily indeed. A couple of Hellions are coming back, coming towards the natural, ready to try and take it all out, but the load up into the overlords. Is this drop going to be successful? Is it going to get spotted by those Vikings? Will Happy see it? The answer, no, he will not. Instead, running those Hellions in, Demarg is going to lose a lot of drones here to these five blue flame hellions, or should I say four if I could count correctly, but this is where the action's going, the drop now coming in, roaches and hydras on top of the mech army, so much damage being done here, Demaga just vaporizing it, all the tanks taken out, and I think with that Demaga will be able to take the game, because there is just only the one tank there, the th oh actually no, there's some more tanks, so maybe it won't be the end of the game quite yet, this is going to be pretty tough, the natural tank was taken out, the third is pretty well defended, but with nothing really back here. There's these two tanks on the high ground, but once the missile turret's taken out, a good burrow would be good on those roaches, of course. You've got to be thinking, how can I push through? Demarga expanding behind this. In terms of the worker count now, 50 to 41. So actually, Happy's Hellion push has really leveled out the worker count. It's just about clearing up these few units that are on their way but it's what's coming into the third that's concerning me. Even with the planetary fortress there, there are indeed a lot of roaches. And as we can see, the push of the natural getting cleaned up, but the third base is where the action's happening. One tank sniped down near instantly, the second tank knocked down equally as fast. While the repair is going off very nicely, what Demaga needs to do is start chipping away at these workers while focusing the planetary with the rest of the roaches. And as such, he should be able to take it out, but unfortunately, he is not engaging the SCVs at all. And this means that the planetary fortress is just able to clean up these roaches so easily. Hellions are down there, but Happy realizes that actually, I don't have any army left. I'm only, I'm down to just 22 SCVs now. I'm not going to be able to come back in this game. So Demaga does take the series 2-1. It was a 10 series, three solid macro games. I hope everyone watching enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, if you did like the cast, make sure you like the video. Leave a cool comment and subscribe. I'll catch you tomorrow for yet another new game. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.